right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second installment of my Slow Horses review series. Today we're going to be reviewing Season 4, Episode 2 of Slow Horses. Let's get right into it. Alright, so the episode opens with River pulling up to his grandfather's house. And he goes in the house and then we see his grandfather in the bathroom right after he shot the guy from last week's episode. Thinking it was River, but it wasn't. But he's in his delusional state of mind where he is convinced that it is River, but it is not River. River then enters the bathroom with a shotgun pointed at him by his own grandfather, and his grandfather is so delusional that he thinks that it's an imposter pretending to be River, when in reality it is indeed River Cartwright. River then says to ask him a question that only he would know the answer to, and his grandfather does, and that's when he actually realizes that that's really River, and that he did not kill River like he thinks he did. River begins to examine the body of the person that his grandfather killed, and he finds diazepam on his body, meaning that they were gonna drug his grandfather and most likely drown him in the tub. River then finds on the body a return train ticket to France and a receipt from Le Bronc Russe, a cafe in France. According to this dude's passport, his name is Adam Lockhead. The grandfather gets very panicked with all the questions River is asking and he presses the panic button that we first saw last week. So now that means MI5 are notified that there's a problem. So he needs to kind of cover his tracks, cover up the situation, and get them both out of that house as soon as possible. River then plants his wallet and his phone on this guy's dead body to throw off the investigation and have them think that it was him that died based off the wallet and the phone being on the body. But clearly, as we know, it's not him. He's not dead. He just planted his stuff on this body to throw off the investigation. Once he plants that stuff, he then proceeds to blow off this guy's face with the shotgun. So he's unrecognizable to make it even harder to identify. So immediately after River blows off this guy's face, he proceeds to throw up in the toilet and then we get the opening intro for Slow Horses Season 4 Episode 2. We then cut to MI5 with Deanna and Giddy. She says that she's received the passport of the bomber from his apartment and they're discussing it and uh they get to the elevator and she says that they basically need to keep this quiet and she makes a call to put giddy on like a high security watch pretty much and diana's trying to figure out a way to cover it up because it turns out that this uh winter's character is was once a member of the mi5 and they have all these fake documents on them they created all these fake documents fake social fake credit report fake everything and it turns out the bomber is tied to the mi5 we then go back to standish's house and david is convinced that he killed River and both her and Jackson are telling him that he didn't and he is so confused, so lost, he thinks that Catherine Standish is his wife Rose, which obviously she's not. He's very confused, he gets up, tries to leave, he has no idea where he is. Jackson tries to press him and get some answers, but he doesn't seem to have any clue what's going on, can't answer any questions. He's just convinced that he killed River. Then uh, Jackson leaves and heads back to Slough House while Standish is there, left to deal with David and his mental issues all by herself. Then River Cartwright arrives in France. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that Cartwright took the passport and the one-way train ticket from the guy that his grandfather killed. Back at MI5 now, we are with Claude and Diana. Uh, they're having a conversation when Claude's phone rings and he blames Diana, but it was his phone. 
Now, Diana has him sign his condolences for the people that were lost in the bombings, but Diana also has Claude sign some extra paperwork that basically uh, forces him to agree to go along with covering up the previous MI5 person that was actually the bomber in the previous episode. Now, they want to cover it up. They don't want it getting out. Nobody is allowed to know that a former MI5 person was behind the attack. Back with River in France now, he is searching for the cafe that the River lookalike supposedly showed up at recently. Back at Slough House now, it's a conversation between Shirley and Marcus, and Marcus uh, admits that he's back to gambling. He's only done it once, but he needs $10,000. So what does he want to do? He wants to sell a handgun on the street to make that money unless he can get it some other way. Jackson then shows up at Slough House and tells Ho to reread the text that he sent him and he rereads it and he says, I was up all night identifying Cartwright's body, but in the text, he never said he was dead. So that's when he reveals that Cartwright is not dead. He is indeed in France in search for these guys that came after his grandfather. Lamb then goes to his office and sees the new secretary cleaning and that makes him very, very suspicious. Back with Giddy and Diana again. Diana tells Giddy that there was a mix up and it was a different winter, a winter without an S. And she tells the other lady that she's good to go to release her. Diana says it was all a big mishap and is completely lying to cover up what actually happened. River then makes it to the cafe and orders himself a latte and asks the guy behind the counter if he's seen anybody here recently that looks similar to him. And he says, yes, he says, I actually know the guy. And he tells River exactly where to go. When River leaves the cafe, we see this guy out here that is clearly knows what he's up to and is after River. All right, so Diana and Cloud aboard a bus here, and this is where Diana reveals to Cloud that the paperwork he signed was for him to take accountability for the cover-up. And then Cloud accuses her of doing that to him because he got the job at the front desk instead of her. And she says, no, I'm just better at doing this than you. So she gets off the bus and tells him to go to the next stop. And Claude is furious because he had no clue that he signed that because he didn't read the paperwork. Well, at the end of the day, that's his fault, isn't it? He should pay more attention to what he's signing before he signs it. Because now he's going to go down for the cover-up and not her. Immediately following, we meet this French guy that's clearly connected with the bombings and the attempted assassination of David Cartwright. And what he does is he sets up a camera to see when David or River return home so they can strike when they're home. This French guy then gets in the car and calls this guy right here. And uh, we get a name reveal for the guy that was killed, Bertrand. And this guy's looking out his window right now and he's able to see River Cartwright. We then cut to River, who's climbing over this giant wall to get to Bertrand's house and see what's going on with these people. We then return to Lamb and the new secretary having lunch. Lamb knows what she's up to. He knows that she's looking for things and watching him very closely. And he basically tells her that she needs to go back to where she came from immediately. He does not like her at all, and that's about that. Cartwright is unspotted by what looks like to be the leader of this group responsible for all this shit. So here's where things really get crazy. River enters the building and grabs a knife, sees some revolvers, takes a picture of this mural on the wall that they have in there, opens a book, finds a picture of all the members of this crew, looks down the flight of stairs, sees it's on fire, runs out of the house, on fire, gets attacked by this dude from behind. Then we get a clear shot of his face, that's him right there. Then this guy barges in with a shotgun and shoots the wall to scare this guy off, then takes Cartwright right out of the house. Then he knocks him out with the butt of his shotgun and drives off with him. Then the show ends with a shot of the burning building. This was season four, episode two of Slow Horses. 
I hope you enjoyed my recap. This is only the second time I've done something like this. So if you guys can leave me feedback in the comments of what I can do better, I'd appreciate it very much. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.